What is the perfect focal length for shooting the biggest variety of things? 1635, maybe a 24 to 70. What about 17 to 50? because this feels like it's pretty close. This lens has a lot going through with a few big negatives, which we'll discuss as well. But this feels like one of those situations where you really have to weigh up, do the positives outweigh the negatives this has. This is a very budget friendly $699, 17 to 50 F4 lens that comes in at a super light 460 grams. And yes, you did hear F4, don't click away just yet. Because what Tamron did here is quite interesting. It's very small and the zoom is all internal, which means it's the perfect lens for balancing on a gimbal, meaning you don't have to keep rebalancing. But also, if you pair this with the 50 to 400, with two lenses, you have 17 all the way through to 400. Normally to get that amount of focal range, you'd need a minimum of three lenses. Now having 17 all the way to 50 means it can be used equally for super wide landscapes, but also go into 50 mil for portraits. Normally you'd have a 16 to 35, but if you wanna get a 50, you need to use another lens. Or another way to look at it is if you wanna use 24 to 70, but then go wider, you need another lens. The only other comparative option to this is the Sony 20 to 70 F4, where you get more zoom, but double the price. So both the 17 to 50 and the 20 to 70 argue the question of being way more versatile lenses. And on paper, they're kind of perfect for travel. Now I've covered the 20 to 70 before from Sony, which you can watch up there. Too long didn't read of it is, optically that lens is really good. It's extremely clinical, but everyone just kind of looks at the F4 and goes, nah, pass. But the 17 to 50 is half the price and wider, so it does appeal to a wider range of people. And ultimately, you can go into crop mode if you use a camera that does, which is most Sony cameras, and get the equivalent of a 75 in crop mode. But it's still an F4, and optically, it does have some issues. It's not the sharpest in the world. If you compare it to a Sony GM lens, which you shouldn't, because this is a budget lens, and that's like Sony's best of the best, but if you do, it's not sharp compared to that. But it's not not sharp when you don't compare it to that if that makes sense. In the corners, it's not as sharp as it is in the middle. And the middle is least sharp at F4 and it gets sharper as you go up. But it's also a budget lens and that is how budget lenses perform. Remember that. On the wide end at 17, going all the way into about 20, you do get some pretty harsh vignetting and some distortion in there as well. Now for photos, obviously you can just tick a couple of boxes and you can fix that. It does fix it pretty well. But for video, it really isn't that easy. The argument here is that this is a budget friendly lens and it's probably gonna be for people that are just getting started. They maybe can only afford the one lens. They don't wanna buy multiple lenses, which is what you need to get this equivalent focal length. So that's the payoff with the budget lens. You get everything that comes with a budget lens. There is also pretty obvious chromatic aberration, which you can reduce in Lightroom. You can't completely remove it on some images, but you can definitely reduce it. But again, to be expected when you buy a budget lens. So if you can see past those things and you are the person that's potentially looking at a more budget friendly option to cover a few different lenses, this is a great lens for hybrid shooters that want to shoot both photo and video. Because you can do real estate, you can do super wide landscape shots, you can travel with a lot less in your bag because it's covering multiple lenses, you can vlog with it, and you can take portraits, albeit at F4, because it goes into 50 mil. It can very easily tick multiple boxes for being able to shoot a larger variety of things that you would otherwise need multiple lenses for. Did you notice that? Where some of the glow on my face disappeared, the halation changed? That was actually done in post using Film Convert, which is the sponsor of today's video. If you've ever wanted to mimic a Black Pro Mist filter or add a little bit more bloom to your highlights, you can now do that. Let me show you how. So let's add the Film Convert effect onto the clip, open the controls, and this is where you'd make your primary corrections if you want to play about with your exposure, your color correction, if you want to add the film stocks, that's all the film stocks you get there. You can also do your Rec. 709 transformations and it has all the built-in ones there for you too from every camera, every brand, that kind of thing. Your grain's in here, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the halation. So the halation is very straightforward. You just tick that box to apply the effect. If we click on view halation alone, you'll see the areas of the image that the halation effect is being applied to. And if we drag the sensitivity, it's obviously going to be applied to more areas. This is what the contrast will do there. So it's applying it more to the darker areas and less to the bright areas. And you can kind of mix between the two. If you look at the hue, you see that it changes the color shift of the hue of the glow. Now, right now I'd say that the glow is definitely a bit too much. So we're gonna bring down that sensitivity. We're gonna increase the softness a little bit as well and make the spread a bit more. I want it a bit brighter. That is what the halation effect is being applied to. So that's the before, that's the after. If you wanna play it back and see how it looks. Let's get to a bit where I actually move. You see it really just naturally kind of increases the glow that the sunrise always has anyway, but just makes it 
look a little bit better than it was. If you want to try this out for yourself, if you click on the link down below, if you already have Film Convert Nitrate, you can just purchase it as an add-on, or if you don't, you can purchase Film Convert Nitrate and get it included. There's a discount code down there as well. Make sure you use that, because otherwise you're going to be spending more money than you have to. Thank you, Film Convert Nitrate, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the video. But the big kicker here for a lot of people that they're not going to be able to see past is that F4. I used to be the same and everyone does learn at their own pace that you don't need f2.8 but f2.8 does seem to be the standard like minimum accepted aperture these days when people are looking at buying a lens. When in reality if you're using this lens for its intended purpose which is everything we've talked about already minus maybe the portraits you're going to find that f4 is more than capable and you're often going higher than f4. The only exception to this will be if you are shooting a lot of low light stuff and that's where you really have to weigh it up because you might actually need that f2.8. Case and point here of everything I'm trying to talk about before we talk about the design and features of this lens. I took this to New York City with me recently and forced myself to leave this on my camera nearly all the time. That is the best way to really truly see if this is a lens that can cover a wide variety of things. Now we took a helicopter tour over the city, one of those doors off ones, and they're very strict with what you can and can't bring. You're not allowed to change lenses mid-flight at the risk of it accidentally falling out the helicopter because the doors are off, which I can completely understand. And if you bring two bodies with you, so two different lenses, one lens on each body, you can't bring your phone. And well, I like to shoot a lot of vertical content, so I had to bring my phone. So I got thrown into a situation where I had to pick one lens. I know I needed things on the wider end, but I know I needed a little bit of reach. And I literally had my 24 to 70 G Master Mark II with me, which is optically basically perfect. It's way sharper than this lens is. But in my head, I knew that 17 to 50 is gonna be a more useful lens for that scenario. And I ended up using this, and it's a decision I do not regret in the slightest. I'm not looking at any of my images for what is potentially a once in a lifetime opportunity and wishing that I had used the 24 to 70 instead, because a lot of it was shot very wide, but then I also did a few images at 50. I actually did a few in crop mode as well to get me closer to that 75. You gotta look at and appreciate this lens for exactly what it is, a 17 to 50. Now in terms of design, this is on par with everything else that Tamron makes these days in terms of their lenses. You have their latest VXD autofocus motors in here and I had zero issues with autofocus for both photo and video. I shot multiple houses for real estate with this, some cars, some racing, and using a wide variety of focus modes, touch tracking, all that kind of thing, zero issues. I never once looked at it and thought that didn't work properly. It did everything I asked it to. 67mm filter thread on the front, which Tamron seems to do on all their lenses now, which is really nice. That means essentially you can buy one set of filters which are 67mm and use them across all lenses without the need for step up or step down rings. He also has that USB-C port now on the side of it, which we come to expect with all Tamron lenses, which means you can plug it in and connect it to Tamron's lens utility app, which also has a phone app. So you can do things like change the focus so it's a little bit more linear. You can change the focus throw on there. You can customize what this button on the side does, which is nice to personalize things and make them how you want them. No aperture ring on here whatsoever, no autofocus manual focus switch. You could change the custom button there to do that if you wanted to, otherwise you're doing all that stuff on the camera body you're using. It's internal zoom, which as I said is perfect for balancing on a gimbal, meaning if you zoom in or out you're not going to have to rebalance it, even if you're kind of worried that your gimbal won't pick up the slack, which it will these days, we talk about that a lot. But it's internal zoom, which is always nice. There's nothing extending when you zoom in or out there. There's weather sealing in all the places that you need it to be weather sealed there, so no worry of it getting broken and moisture kind of getting in, including the USB-C port. It's a good budget-friendly lens that covers a wide focal range. It's gonna be perfect for a wide variety of things, perfect for a lot of people, but it's not gonna get the love that it deserves because of that one thing. It's an F4.